Let me know when you guys are ready. to read. Okay. All right, good morning, everyone. This is the Board of Directors meeting for the Council on Aging, October 16th. Um, may I have a motion to call the meeting to order at 9.30? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, Mission statement. Deb, would you like to do the honors this month? Certainly. Thank you. The mission of the Council on Aging is to advocate for Groveland's older adults to identify their needs, to develop and implement services to meet their health, economic, social, and cultural needs, to encourage maximum independence, and to improve their quality of life. Thank you. Um, Approval of the minutes of the September 18th, 2024 meeting. I never received them. I have two copies of meeting notices, which I just realized. I have a meeting notice for October 16th and a meeting notice for September 18th, but no minutes. And I didn't realize this <laughs> until this morning when I was reviewing it. So that was what was sent in the email. Oh, no, I pressed the wrong. Yeah, it says agenda for yeah, October 16th copies. and minutes for September 18th. Yeah, I don't know if I have it either. I don't think that was sent. These were sent. Oh. And I didn't real. I mean, I, oh. I quickly looked at it when I got the email. Thank you. And then this morning I said, let's get the brain all ready for the, the meeting. And it was like, um, this isn't. Just these are two agendas. Being a little overwhelmed. <laughs> I know you were. So can we just have a second to look at it? Yeah, I'm going to make coffee so everyone can look at it. That's a great idea. Yeah, we, I don't have another can coffee. Let's share this. You, and I can you know, and, and go reading. move on to the next thing. If that's oh gosh, if you, it's okay. I mean, I'm not. <laughs> well, the next thing is the director's report, so we'll have to oh, wait okay. anyway. Mm -hmm. um, could we do something like um, friends of the COA update while we're waiting? <clears throat> All right. 
I'd be happy to. Larry McKelleny, who was the chair of the Friends of the Council on Aging, is not able to be here today. So he asked me if I would just do a quick recap of what's been going on with the Friends. Um, so the calendar raffle for um, this year is out there and is selling briskly. Um, if you have not had an opportunity to get your calendar raffle, it's for every day, the month of November. Each day has a prize of a, a value of at least $50. Calendars are available here in the Council on Aging office, in the library, and possibly several other locations around town. Rita Murray was going to take care of that. Um, so the calendar, they're only $10, and there is a drawing every day. Your name goes back in again if you win. Um, and there will be a table at Pumpkin Fest tonight where we will be selling calendars uh, if you would like. Um, also, at the last meeting, we talked about the um, the bulb fundraiser. Laurel was, did that, and I believe you said there was a three hundred and thirty something dollars. Uh, I don't have my notes with me, but I don't have them either. Yeah, um, <clears throat> somewhere in that vicinity. Yes, we did well. Thank you all who purchased bulbs, and I am still. I still have some in my trunk because I, they're not people aren't home and responding to my phone calls about, hi, I have your bulbs. <laughs> when can I come? Where do you live? <laughs> so anyway. Well, thank you very much for, for taking that on, delivering it, and doing all of that. Um, also discussed at the last <coughs> Friends meeting was some future upcoming events. Uh, for example, there will be a, an a cappella group performance in the spring. Uh, we talked about the possibility of doing a ladies' tea in the spring. Um, Although those things are still on the, um, the working table and more information will be out as soon as uh, that's finalized. Um, the coin drive went well. There was about $350, I believe. Um, 375 um, from that. So, oh, 375 Okay. So, again, we thank everyone um, who participated in that. Um, I think that's pretty much it right now for the Friends update. <clears throat> Has everyone had a chance to at least skim the minutes from the September 18th meeting? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. May I have a motion to accept the minutes? A motion to accept the minutes. Second. Is there any discussion or questions on these minutes? All those in favor of accepting the minutes? I abstained because I wasn't there. Yes. Okay, thank you. Now I have two copies. <laughs> um, <laughs> director's report. Alyssa, if you would. Yes, good morning. Thank you so much. Um, happy to answer any questions um, if, if people have them. Um, I can do a high overview as well. So certainly um, just wanted to recap hey, Joanna yep just wanted to recap a little bit but again certainly if anybody has questions from the board along the way happy to, to discuss those um so last month <laughs> it was a similar kind of message in the beginning about change and it takes time and and so forth and um and this month as i was get setting sitting down and, and figuring out what i wanted to share um there was more change to be had, which again was uh, the cliche as a phrase as it may be that change is the only constant. Um, but I do feel that, that change offers us um, a wonderful opportunity as well for all involved um, to really look at, to reassess what we have, what we do as individuals, in this case as an organization, about how we can continue to grow and best meet our, our community um, needs. So. I um, 
I just found it interesting myself of continuous change. It's good mm-hmm. stuff. <laughs> just on our toes. Yes. Um, and and highlights um, for finances, again, nothing um, too big. I did share um, the details of finances um, with Deb. I finally feel, you know, one year and a few months in in a better place of organizing. Mm-hmm. And we've always had the information. It's just... Uh, more of a systems thing for me. So I, I've shared what I currently have with Deb and our treasurer and certainly um, anyone else that would like to, to see that information, feel free. But it really gives the details about what's spent where, again, so that we can particularly staff know where we stand on our budget lines. Um, the current grant that I'm working on right now will be the Mass DOT grant. I do anticipate that it will be um, highly competitive this year. I think it probably has been every year, but in this year in particular, um, they're really focusing on on the need for partnerships with people. Um, so I'm looking, of course, um, the town has provided letter of support in the past. I'm looking to ask Nichols Village um, for a letter of support as well because we do um, give a number of their um, community members rides to, to things. Um, so looking into that, certainly our NEAT or our partners with the NEAT organization are applying for the same grant, which they desperately need to. Um, and, and so it's, again, competitive. We'll see where it lands. And uh, certainly this is our one and only um, <coughs> grant that we'll be applying for, and we'll just, just keep on looking. However, for FY20, our FY25, um, this Mass DOT grant is, our, is all we have for transportation expenses. So just putting that out there. Um, any questions on, on finance things? Just so you know, this didn't come out double-sided, like oh, it was no. three to five. So those pages, like two and four. Yeah, one to three. Sorry. Yeah. Are missing. That's OK. I, <laughs> I looked at it at home. Uh, and certainly. Yeah. One, um, two, three, four, five. Mine worked. Yeah. Did yours not work? No. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got the only lucky one. <laughs> <laughs> lucky, lucky you. <laughs> okay. Apologies for That's that. Right. I was wondering why you skipped way over. I'm looking at the, you know, the spreadsheet, oh, and it was like, what we're discussing. <laughs> oh, boy. No, okay. I was, I thought I, I was really, I said, I thought there was other things when I read it at home. <laughs> yes, me too. What am I they are about? numbered on the corners. I don't yeah. know if that's helpful. So one, three, uh, or five. Yeah, yeah, right here. One, three, five. Five. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully we all got a chance to at least look at it. The pages uh-huh. should be there. Oh, no, because they didn't print double-sided. They didn't print double-sided. They didn't do the other side. So it means, like, you didn't get... Two, okay. Two but you did get an email. Yes. Yeah. And I'm more than happy to... Um, to print it again for anyone that needs it. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, but anyway, no big, no big changes on, on finance and that. And next month you will see changes for or a big expense in finance for exactly what we just talked about, transportation. Um, we did our, our routine maintenance um, just a few weeks ago at the beginning of October. So wheels aligned, oil change, inspection sticker. All that good stuff. <laughs> and the van is doing well. The van is doing well. Good. Yeah, yeah. Good to go. And Joe and Frank take um, really excellent care in in the van. Not only the the me- technical stuff, but just making sure that it's clean and um, you know looks good. And so I appreciate it. Nice. Um, assistant director's report here. Um, she highlights a, a few things we've talked about before, including you know mahjong has has really taken off, um, and you know particularly um, our member Carol McCarran um, has been amazing um, and stepping in to to be part of the group and help lead as well as who started this group and Fredericks of of Nichols along with her daughter to take charge and and show us all how it's how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> um, age span um, had instead of doing a, a delivered meal for traveling chef they they were the ones who sponsored our barbecue in, in September which was a really great event so I was happy to, to have that be done again and then we had shopping in Plastow um, was a new event 
thing that went on. We had a fall prevention program. Um, also, as there was fall prevention awareness week in September. Um, they were just a really great speaker. I don't know. Um, it looks like I, Irene was able to, to show, but they, um, I really like the phrase I heard when I sort of was outside listening. Um, you know, they're, they're there to, to solve problems. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a reason why things happen. And so they're there to help problems solve, um, you know, some of the logistics about what can help, you know, in regards to mobility devices and things like that. And also just life experience that they've seen. They could be like, you know what, maybe ask your doctor about X, Y, Z. Um, so it was really great working with them. Um, we have a couple of spots open for Halloween Trivia Luncheon, which is taking place next week. Um, would love to, to see you there. And as we'll talk about in later detail, but, you know, um, Nisha mentioned that she is in the pantry on Wednesday um, mornings and, and afternoons. Um, a couple of insights in regards to programming um, trends. Uh, Health and wellness programs showed, showed growth in, from August to September, particularly 3B um, Fit and, and yoga, which was, was great to see, um, as well as uh, social programming. As we mentioned, the Mahjong really added a lot <laughs> to see our numbers grow, so hopefully that continues. Um, anything about programs that happened in the past before I go to highlights? for a future. So still plenty happening in October. Um, our Memory Cafe is, is taking a ride. We're going off site for the first time um, over to, I might be saying it wrong, Smolok, Smolok? Yeah, Smolok, yeah. Smolok Farms. Um, it's a fully mm. um, accessible trail to, to see the farm animals, to visit the farm store. So that will be a lovely trip. Again, the Memory Cafe is for people um, living with dementia and their um, care partners. And we do have a couple of just, of not just, but we do have a couple of care partners coming alone um, because it is just a really great group um, to, to join because their, their loved one um, that is living with dementia is, you know, in the, is, um, I know a couple of them are over at Sarah's place and have other fun activities that they're involved with. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Be sure to get the apple cider donut. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. We've already <coughs> talked about that. <laughs> 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 um, shopping trip again to Plastow's as it was recommended in our suggestion box. People just wanting access to, to shopping. Uh, for other goods in addition to groceries. Um, we do have a few spots left in our Halloween fall decor class, um, and then certainly our neighbor's table. Amesbury is open up. I hear it's quite lovely over there in their renovated space, and we are making a trip over there Thursday, October 31st. We leave here at 12 o'clock, but again, for all of our um, destinations, be it grocery shopping or trips, the COA van can pick up Grover residents and, and you know, drop you off at home, pick you up at home, so it can be a round trip service there. So I hope people take advantage of that. Any questions on programming? No. Um, this is why we're talking about future programming, our newsletters um, were sent to print yesterday. Um, they should be in the office next week. I'm hoping by next Tuesday, but I'll certainly keep people posted. Those are on the email list. You get it early. So hopefully um, by the end of this week, people will be able to get it online um, to, to see what's going on. We have a lot of really wonderful things happening, including um, uh, a trip to the Boston Pops again. Um, we are um, acknowledging Older Drivers Awareness Week and having the RMV come and, and chat about that, as well as, as doing things for National Caregivers Month in, in November. So, great stuff. Food pantry. Um, during the month of September, we had 66 attendees. Again, these are duplicate people um, come into the food pantry with uh, just over 1,100 um, pounds of food. Um, it was a little bit lower than last month in regards to number of people, but the pounds per person um, increased. I talked to ONT recently. They said they saw the same thing. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's universal for whatever reason that may be. Um, 
our Amazon wish list. Again, it is live and online. You can always find it on our website, our town website. Um, we're under departments and you just find us under Council of Aging. It's on the front page there. Um, and then the Grove and Police and Fire Department will be holding a food drive. And this should actually be November 2nd. Apologies for that. Let me double check the calendar. November 1st just didn't look right. Yep, November 2nd is a Saturday. So November <coughs> 2nd, Saturday, from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m., um, they will be holding a food drive for non-perishable food goods. It'll be out in front of the police and fire station. Um, so any and everyone um, that can donate, that would be wonderful. Last year, we received a tremendous amount of food, and it helped us go long into, um, you know, well beyond November. So really um, look forward to doing that again. We will need volunteers to sort through all that glorious food um, that week so if there is anybody that wants to come in perhaps that Monday um, would, would love to hear from you and basically we just spread out all the tables in the hallway and we just organize them by food categories and put it back in so thank you to um, the, the town for making that happen miscellaneous updates tax work off applications they are due um, this month November 15th um, we have copies <coughs> of the application um, in the office that are available online. I'm more than happy to talk to people one-on-one -on -one if people have any questions about that. Um, community knowledge series, we have, we are booked for November and December, but always looking for people that are interested in sharing something new with us. Um, so if we have a community member that would like to share, um, please do connect with us and we'd be happy to schedule it. So this could be everything, yes. Um, just to backtrack yeah. just a little bit, um, the food drive is November 2nd. Yes. But voting day, it, voting is November 5th. 5th. Yes. So the tables will be out there as voters come through. We'll have to sort no. the hallway. Well, it'll, it'll need to be done before that. <coughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. We, could, we will sort in the hallway, but the, they plan to drop off the food on Monday, okay. and so, like, we'll have to do it. That's when you need the help. Yeah. Yeah. I put it in my calendar. Oh, I'll come thank down. you. Yeah. 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 I'll okay. make every effort. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, last year, um, Linda, <clears throat> I don't think it was scheduled, but Linda was there. <laughs> we, um, it was a lot of food. There was yeah. a lot of food. <laughs> So we have veteran coaches. When we, <laughs> we do. When we come on. <laughs> I will be there. <laughs> I'll be there too. I just put it in. All right. Thank you November very much. Fourth is sorting day. November is that the month? Yes. yes. Yep. Yep. I can come as well. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Thank really you. appreciate it. Um, I, sus I don't have a firm time from the police station. They just said that they would drop it off Monday morning, um, but I can. I can confirm when that would be. <coughs> I suspect, like, by 9 o'clock that it would probably be here. I mean, they might even do it before then when they're done with the day, just put it in here. So. <laughs> Thank you for, for that, Irene. Um, art Showcase. So we had about five people actually hand in applications with their art and their art was amazing so really want to do it but i didn't feel that um, we had enough to give it the full day and get an audience of which they certainly deserve um no it's also a busy time and and all that that good stuff so we are going to try again, because it does need to happen this fiscal year with the grant that we received from MCC, um, the week of April 24th. Um, and I picked April 24th again because the weather is great. Um, the uh, um, Washington Hall is open by then. And also, it's, uh, it's intergenerational week. Uh, so I thought it would be a really great way to promote even more and connect um, working with um, with students or younger adults of all ages um, with the focus of course being on artists of, of 60 plus but 
What day of the week would this be? So I don't have it set yet. I do know that Sunday was well received as, as being a day because then family could come and, and see the program. So um, that's what I'm probably leaning towards. I know Claire over at the um, Washington Hall really likes doing programming on Sunday. Mm. Um, so that's my guess but i would also love to see if we can, if there's a way that we can showcase the work longer i know that the library is putting up um oh, yeah. a way to um, hang work in there and so maybe there's something more that we can make it even bigger and better um, um, by doing yeah. something april, in april april 24th is a thursday 21st 20 so no, that's okay. going to be school vacation week. It is yeah, school vacation week. So but that might give you more opportunities to not do it on, if, if Sunday didn't work. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Do it on school vacation yep. week. Yeah. That is a good idea. Um, yeah. I'm just wondering, is there any, maybe someone could come up with some kind of creative, since it is intergenerational week, to do like a multi-generational piece of artwork? Yeah. Like some sort of. Like big quilt. scale collaboration. Yeah, or like even have a family. Yeah, I saw this. Uh, oh, love the family idea. Mm. Like love have that. a you know a, a yeah. family quilt. Yeah, a small quilt that the kids did different pieces <sighs> or idea. things like that. Yeah, love that idea. We'll put that out there as for inspiration for people to yeah. take hold on. I've seen public artwork done with like a essentially a honeycomb tile pieces i don't mm. know that we would need oh. to use actual tile but then that could be like a drop-in that maybe we do at the beginning of the month and then put it all together and that could be a showcase so i think this lends itself yeah too. and that week i do Thanks. think with it being school vacation you might if you did have a drop-in thing yeah yeah mm. okay that Thank might work you. i like it um, and then just a reminder, MCOA conference is next week, so um, I will be out of the office um, the afternoon of the 22nd for the rest of the week, certainly accessible via email. Um, Nisha, of course, will be here. Um, I just wanted to put that out there. There are a lot of really great things going on at the MCOA conference. I do believe that most of the resources are available once the conference is done, so um, be sure to check out their webpage afterwards. And this is the conference at which you're presenting? Yes. Yep. Good for you. Good times. Um, Barbara mentioned it, but huge thank you to Laurel, um, not only in what she does here on this board, but for her work as a Friends member. Uh, I think going out and hand delivering all these balls um, is, is really appreciated. So thank you very much. And bringing that fundraiser to light, um, knowing that we have the support of the Friends is, is much appreciated. So. Thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> Any questions or, or thoughts um, on things that I shared or maybe something that I didn't share and you're curious about? No, we had a really great um, presentation yesterday about heating assistance, so I will put a plug out there. Um, the, the heating assistance applications are, um, are out and available right now. These are federal funds. Um, and they open your world to a lot more um, support if needed. So highly encourage any and everyone, if you think that, that you might not only need support in, in, in doing your, your monthly heating bills, but if you're looking at, you know, there's a boiler that I'm gonna have to repair soon and that's a ton of money, or you need weatherization or maybe energy um, efficient appliances, if the entryway to all of those supports are by submitting your application for heating assistance. Um, so we can certainly help you with that here at the Council on Aging. Um, you can do it directly yourself online um, and or you can stop by the Community Action Office over in Hayroll. So would love, love, love uh, for people to do that. There are other community resources um, for heating assistance too, but we have to know if you need that support. The congregational churches have been a huge supporter in making that happen for community members. Um, so if people um, want to learn more, inquire about it, would love to, to make sure that people are, are warm. And it really is a, a health and wellness thing that, that's needed. So please do reach out. Thank you. 
Uh, next on the agenda is strategies to enhance COA outreach services to meet community goals. Uh, as we all know, Carrie uh, left us last week to um, take another job opportunity. Um, and so through the end of this year anyways, or, or for now, um, those responsibilities are being shared between Nisha and Alyssa. Um, there was talk about hiring a 16, so that we don't lose the money that we have in our town in, from the town budget. Uh, we have money in there for 16 hours a week to, um, we don't want to lose that, to hire someone uh, part time um, to work in the office through the end of this year and then see what happens next year with the budget going forward. Um, has there been any more discussion or uh, conversations about the outreach office? Um, I mean, certainly I've been doing a, a lot of reflecting on it. I would love to have, um, and certainly if she watches, this will be public, <laughs> but I, I would love to have that conversation with the town about the, the funds, because um, I, I we do want to be fiscally responsible. Um, and I want to, one of my hesitations about hiring a part-time food pantry coordinator is that we need that consistency of staff in the office because when we have, I mean, that relates to this whole thing about needing the full-time outreach person, right? Because when you have a staff person in there, you build the report and you have all the information at your fingertips versus if you have a temporary person to sort of fill the role, yeah, it helps, you know, on a day-to-day -day so that, you know, Nisha and I can do other things. But our ultimate role is to serve our community. And as you see from, you know, the shift that I would like to make, I, I just question it. That's all. I'm just questioning if a part-time person for that role is really what we need to do. Um, if it's what we need to do mm -hmm. to make sure we have the funds for next year, then absolutely i mean it's certainly a job that needs to be done um but if i'm thinking holistically about how we can best serve our our community um you know i don't know well, outreach is way more than just the pantry that's yeah the pantry is just a thing. well that's what i feel like I it's think an, everyone an thinks open that's point. all it is and yeah there's so much more yeah so on one of the on the pieces on the packets that i gave you um, about the outreach um, services. I mean, so that is the bulk of what we do. Yep. It's 62% of, of our of services that we provide. Um, and that pantry piece is, is such a, uh, a great entry point to have those conversations. Certainly people can go where they feel most comfortable, but you know, when you're in there because, oh, I just need a carton of eggs, then it's it's um, yeah. it's a nice it's a nice starter conversation. And and just look at the the number of unduplicated individuals. Yep. Four hundred and sixty six. With outreach. I mean, that's a big number. That I do think needs full time. Yeah. Because think of how many more people are out there that need this that we. Oh yeah. And we're, yeah, I mean, exactly. We're just getting started. And I think, um, you know, separate conversations, so I almost hate bringing it up, but there are a number of, we know, towns that have senior centers. And when you have a senior center, there's, there's a lot of social programming, and I don't want to take away the importance of social programming. Social programming is, is, a, is an absolute need and the essential of a different category. But we, at the moment, do not have a senior center. But we do have an office dedicated to support the core needs of food, transportation, medical, you know, and and um, and heating assistance and, and so forth. And that's that's where we, I feel, at this moment, but certainly open to discussion where where we should focus. 
You're preaching to the choir. <laughs> True. I, I do want it to, to be named. Um, again, I don't want anyone to think that we are saying two things. Well, so I'll say it in the positive. Absolutely not cutting um, social programming. Again, that is also core to what we do. But if we look at the numbers, it's just smaller, a smaller number. Um, when we get our senior center, that will change. <laughs> uh, but that's not where we are right now. But we do a ton for what we do. And that is currently tag team by myself, director, and assistant director. Um, and so we are not going to cut that, but we need to focus on outreach services. So if there was, so knowing that our budget allows for two full-time people, it seems that then we use that to the best of our ability to focus on where the need is. And then having a program coordinator to help you know, with the, with the calls that come in to say that they want to register for this and that, which again is an important need, um, but it's not something that um, needs to uh, to take a, to take away from anything. And it could probably be done on a part time basis Absolutely. without any loss. So that's why, yeah. yeah. I again, my proposal out there is to shift the assistant director role so keeping that title of assistant director and shifting the role uh, the task <coughs> and responsibilities to to the outreach services again which is 62 percent of our current needs and again that was with part-time um, granted again Nisha and I have always sort of had to pick up because it was part-time <laughs> um, but if we had a full-time person that that would be tremendous so a director responsible for everything currently doing, you know, in regards to the administrative role. Um, I'm currently tag teaming on, on marketing and, and social programming. I would take that on again fully um, so that the assistant director can focus on outreach. Again, part-time role um, because we do have the monies for that would be focused on the um, programming coordination just in regards to setup registrations that right. sort of light lift booking people and yeah. things like that which yeah. does seem yeah to be it seems to lend itself better to part-time yeah than outreach does yeah because part yeah because programming you can sort of pick up Joanna so absolutely does not mean that No, not at all. She'll she'll still have her position. Some of her responsibilities may change, right. but you know she's had the job for many years, and and things do change as the needs change. And so she will still have her position. And the advantage of Nisha in that role is that she already knows so many of the people, and she's she's you know she can, you know I think coordinate people's needs because she does have all the knowledge of people and she's seen them in so many different. And well, she does it anyway. She does, I know. So, <laughs> so it is, it's just formalizing it's it. My understanding that there are two full-time positions that um, we have now, I don't have two full-time So right positions. now we have two full-time positions and one part-time. So that's not changing. But with 466 people counted, and we, there's a question as to how many people are perhaps in need of services but do not come in oh, and yeah. are not counted. And given the fact that even within these 466 people, clearly there have been diverse needs. Yeah. That's, well, that's, me, the thing that's is, a very yeah. significant number yeah. showing a very significant need in this community, yeah. which needs to be filled. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, in, in regards to outreach, it's not, um, 
One, it's, it can be short term, absolutely. Maybe somebody's recovering for a surgery and so then that person needs transportation, they need meals on wheels, they need medical equipment <coughs> um, and all of those things together. And that's gonna be for a few months, but then they have somebody else who maybe needs long-term assistance. And so then how do we find them, you know, the right resources for all those things? And then the follow-up to make sure that those referrals we did are, are actually taking place and they are getting the, the assistance they they need so it's um, it's a long-term commitment for the person um, involved in, in serving these individuals um, that's the, the the nature of the job is so um, interweaved and you said something very important and we had discussed this at a couple well, of can years you, we ago can't, I can't okay. hear your question down here you just said something very important that and we discussed it a couple of meetings ago that the COA office is not responsible for solving. They're a referral. So they refer to, they need the knowledge of the referral services and they refer to, this is where you can go, let me help you with this, let me, you know. Mm -hmm. It's not solving it or um, that you need to, you know, know everything <laughs> yeah there are people or places out there so you know it doesn't mean that you have to be a doctor to solve the medical problems <laughs> or I think so we need to know where expert, where, to go. where to go and also you know what their rights are what are, you know you can't mm -hmm. have your electricity turned off you can't have your heat exactly. turned off you know and so number one making sure that those needs are met and then where do you go for that help um, and then following through to making yeah. sure because you know as we know the social services are um, overworked and so things can fall through the cracks and that's where I do feel it is our job to make sure that we are staying on and making sure that our um, community members are getting the services um, that they need exactly. and I think follow through is um, often not recognized. So we see people come in, you actually tangibly take a phone call with a request or a need, but follow-up can seem invisible, yet it's so significant yeah. and important. I mean, we're working on time consuming. On somebody, you know, that, that came in with a dire need in June, that's still is, you know, we're still working on it um, and, and tracking everything right. through and, and making sure. And all the more reason why it a should be a full time. Position. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it doesn't yeah. fall through the cracks right. here. And having right. someone that has, has sees, you know, all the aspects, yeah. you know, and has that experience yeah. and knows what those services are, you know? Yep. Wow. Yes, Joanna? Wow. Yeah. No the expenses. It's now zero because it's we zero. had to get. We have the only thing the town pays for now is salaries, because we had to in order to make our people paid at, at what we felt was an appropriate wage. We had to sacrifice all of our expenses. So all the That's town pays for. Is, we do it through grants and donations and fundraising yeah so our our budget quite honestly is 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 pretty good you know i mean it's a lot of work to apply for grants but but you know the coa has done it before me and and certainly i'm i'm continuing to do it you know last year it was around well, just over yeah Well, that's done well in advance of mm -hmm. town meeting. Town mm -hmm. meeting is not really where you do that kind of thing. You do that when you have, as we do, we have right. meetings with the finance board. Right. We have meetings with uh, the town administrator, the town accountant, um, as well as the board. And that is where, 
that is where we make the push for our needs, and we certainly do that. We go to all those meetings and strongly support and present yeah. our budget needs. Yeah. Town meeting's a little late. And I think the best, the best advocacy that we have is everything that the Council on Aging is doing now. I mean, you know, that's visible in town. I think people are seeing. It's really great that your organization has grown. So, yeah, town meeting, I know I've heard that concern expressed as well by someone. And um, my personal opinion is town meetings too late. You need to have those discussions because otherwise you stand up at town meeting and all you really do Honestly, in my, as someone who's attended a lot of these, is you kind of aggravate everybody that's sitting there because they just want to get through with it and get home. Yeah. And they're like, why? We're not, we're not even discussing this. Why are you standing up and giving a 10-minute speech? So, but I've heard, that, I've heard that as well. And the budget is already set by the time you go to town meeting, which is why we go to all those meetings with the finance board, the selectmen, the town administrator, to make our push for our budget. So that's done well in advance of town meeting. Right, but at that point, if you go in, so say, for example, you've gone to all the meetings, you've agreed with the town. I mean, the town is very limited in their funding. There's only so much money the town has. They can't increase that without override voids. Right, and that's, so if you were to go into town meeting and you were to stand up and say, you know, yep, we agreed to this, but we really want three full-time positions. Well, the only way, so say town meetings, like, yeah, that's a great idea. They vote for it, but now the town is stuck with, they don't have the money to fund it. So you really, all you've done is create a problem for someone else to solve, I think is my right. yeah. point. I on think that. in the past, that's what was done a lot. Yes. And then they'd go back to the table and come up with a new budget, and then some but other it, department gets. Somebody else, it has to come from somebody else. So, right, yeah, right. I mean, I think the way it's done now is yeah, much and, more and, fair. And I will say that finance board, the board of selectmen, across the board, they, they really do meet and try to work with us. Um, so it's not us against them. Right. I think, we, like, I think that's what it used to be. Yeah. And it's not like that no. anymore, which is great. I, right. I'm so thrilled. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, so those meetings, you know, I mean, on before the departments get started, I know the town administrator is always, you know, already working on the budget for FY26. Um, um, the departments, you know, are certainly um, informally working on them now, but formally, I believe meetings may start in January. Um, all town departments are able, they're on the agenda um, for the select board meetings. I know I've gone a few times just to give updates so that we can be, um, you know, front and center uh, with, with the select board and was a really uh, welcome, I feel, uh, agenda item. It's a standing agenda item to say, you know, give a little shout out about, right. about what the department's doing so that it's not only finance, you know, right. so that when you get to those finance meetings, you've had conversations right. before about, about all the great work you're doing and or needs. So. Yep. And part of that, hopefully, as you all know, the ONT, um, our neighbor's table, um, got um, canceled on their part last night, but we hope to reschedule for the following meeting. Um, so two weeks um, will be, be the ONT thing. Um, yeah. So I'm, yeah, I'm not sure how, how you would like to move forward. You can. Do you need a vote in support of your recommendation or is that it, or I don't know if personnel committee wants to meet and then I don't know I don't know well that might be a way to go yeah. for the personnel subcommittee um, to meet and perhaps decide what to do about a part-time role when I mentioned earlier about spending the money in the budget wasn't necessarily I didn't mean to imply that it needed to be for an outreach person specifically just mm -hmm. someone part-time to fill in the holes where you and Nisha are now working in the outreach yeah. office yeah. to fill in that hole. Yeah. Um, so we could, uh, the personal subcommittee could meet to talk about, um, you know, that role, perhaps posting and advertising for a, a part-time position for the balance of this year, at least. Um, and the personnel subcommittee right now is Irene and Linda Workman. And myself as ex officio, I think that's it. 
but if anybody else would like to be on that, you know, to have that discussion going forward, more than welcome. No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sometimes when you get more than three people, it gets too yeah. complicated. Okay. All right. Well, we can um, meet after and maybe pick a date for that. Okay. Personnel right. subcommittee? Yes? <laughs> okay. Anything else on that um, position moving forward? or? I, I will just say that we, um, just to add and, and put it on record, um, that we... You know, the personnel committee, well, um, Irene, Barbara, and myself, you know, we, we did meet. Oh, no. No. <laughs> That's why I named, because I realized that okay. the window was not there. Apologies. Thank you. There. Uh, we, we did meet um, with, with Nisha before Carrie's last day, um, you know, to discuss all of this. Um, and so nothing should be a surprise um, by by anyone um, in regards to what we are are currently doing and and our plans for for the future so yeah just wanted to put it out there <laughs> all right then if there is no other discussion on that um, subcommittee updates any subcommittee updates to be bylaws is meeting bylaws. today right after yeah, this we're meeting today, and we have a meeting on November Wednesday, uh, Six. the Wednesday Six. after the Thank election. I'm going well. November 6th. The day after the election. Yeah. We should be nice and punchy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because we're both working the polls. Yes. Um, on November 6th with people from the town. Yeah. Do we go over the bylaws and whatever? And Larry also. But Larry couldn't be here, so yeah. we're doing it by, by phone, phone today. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on subcommittees? Okay, thank you. Um, Friends of the Council on Aging Update, we moved that forward, so that has already been discussed. Is there any other um, business, old business, new business, any business? <laughs> going once, going twice. <laughs> uh, discussion of October meeting focus area, COA board goals for FY25 strategic planning. Uh, I'll be very honest and be the first to say, maybe, hopefully not the first, <laughs> oh, oh, not only the first, um, that I was not able to take a good look at that or, or give it a heck of a lot of thought. The last few weeks have been insanely busy and I just have not had a chance to get to that. Um, if anyone else has anything they would like to discuss on the bowl, the, the bowls, the board goals for FY25, here's the time. I think if who let's let's do this. Let's see who else feels like Barbara and who would like to delay this until November. And I would say, I'll be honest, Barbara, same thing. I've been away three weeks out of the last month, wow. so or close to three weeks. So I have not given it the time that I had expected to give it by now either. So anybody else have things they want to discuss today? Well, I would also vote to postpone for November. Although I did take some time to look at all the documents and, and staff goals and, and everything, when it comes to this strategic planning, I, I'm questioning, is there any model out there that we could see to help guide us in the the loftiness or bigness, for yeah. lack of a better. I mean, I can certainly. There's. I mean, if you look, I'm sure everybody has their own template that they like to go with. Um, but I can certainly send you resources that that I've used in the past about. Um, yeah, sort of making it doable. Uh, <laughs> I think a big portion, though, honestly, is the the restructuring. Of, I do too. Yeah, I do too. But, yeah. I think restructuring finances you know trying to get the um get more financial support from the town if possible and certainly long 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 range would be having a senior yeah center. yeah absolutely I mean, just those kind and and i think also um keeping in mind always 
kind of is the light or the beacon to guide us is our mission statement. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. So I think, you know, something important to remind ourselves when thinking about a strategic plan, you know, maybe I like three year plans because, again, that seems achievable within mm-hmm. A, mm-hmm. a shorter term of time, but certainly three, three to five. Um, and you don't have to solve right. what you're going for, but you're making a step within those period of years to go for the big thing, which maybe ultimately, right, right. is that senior center. Right. Um, so. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, so I would recommend that we move this to our November meeting and hopefully I'm have sorry. more time in the next few weeks to. Mm-hmm. I do look have. It over. A, sorry. I do have a question um, about the budget deadlines and dates. Is that also something we should be considering so they for November haven't... or December? They haven't set the uh, strict schedule um, with departments yet. I anticipate it will be out shortly. Um, if it's anything like last year, the department meeting started in January, so we should have our, our budget, um, you know, yeah, by December. But, again, that really is um, okay. for staff salaries. would love to have some sort of expense line, but I – we do have to be fiscally responsible and we can look at the numbers and we don't need an exorbitant amount because we are fortunate that we do have the formula grant um, and that we do have the the funds in the revolving account from the friends. Um, So, yeah. Since Carrie's absence, how has, how have, um, requests and um, actions um, related to outreach been going? Yeah, so, you know, again, similar as, you know, it's only only been about a week and a half. Although it may be longer. (laughs) <laughs> um, you know, so when when Carrie was here, she was here two days a week. You know, she was here Wednesdays and Thursdays. Um, so that means, you know, or I'm sorry, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So we, Nisha and I, were on it for Monday, Thursday, and Friday. Okay. Um, so honestly, the the biggest change. Um, well, I would say two biggest changes. The biggest change front and center, just because it's so hands-on and we can see it, as we've all noted, is, is the food pantry work. Um, the second biggest change is, you know, that sort of long-term following through with somebody. So certainly we've always help people in the immediate niche and I of, okay, go here. And then we'll say, and then Carrie or whomever the outreach person is, can you take it from here? Mm -hmm. Um, And so this is more now as, you know, we stated in our meeting, um, you know, with, with Nisha directly about this, that, you know, it is very much when we receive those calls now, we will be that sole contact person on that particular wow. issue. Okay. So it's, it's going too. fine, okay. but yeah. You know, it's not ideal, I think, mostly for the individual, um, but it's also what we are, are able to do, and there has to be a balance there. Thank you. Yeah. So is everyone on board with uh, moving this forward to November? I make a motion we move it to November. Move um, the discussion of the strategic planning goals FY26. Does it need to be a vote or can we just vote? We don't need to vote. I don't think we need a vote, so we'll we'll just move it forward to November. Okay. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Any other um, discussions or information or? Questions before we adjourn? All right. Um, I just want to say thank you to the staff for flexibility in meeting needs, filling gaps, serving people. As always. Mm -hmm. Always, absolutely. Thank you. May I have a motion to adjourn the meeting at 1030? I make a motion. I second. <laughs> okay. Laurel motion. I second it. I got it. <laughs> All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Our next meeting is November 20th. Thank you. Mm-hmm.
Can we? Um, can I? Do you have t do you have tickets, Barbara? Right there. Yep.